So I see it's already evening and uh, looks like everyone is eager to try what a famous local cuisine has to offer for a dinner, so I'll be brief and won't take much of your time. Uh, so today I have a brief time slot to share some details about a POC that we conducted for a customer and uh, some quite notable results that uh, we have obtained. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not entitled to directly name the customer, but I can share the profile. Essentially, it's a nationwide retail network. Uh, it has well over 20 years of history, and uh, currently it's several tens of uh, points of sale distributed across several thousands of cities and towns. And it has a lot of revenue, but they, of course they face uh, some very strong competition. And uh, they understand that the key to keeping and growing the customer base is analytics. In their field, it's especially, uh, especially demanded because they collect a lot of data for, about the purchases of the shoppers that visit their uh, venues. And uh, so this customer has been investing uh, a lot of uh, money and efforts into analysis and segmentation of their shoppers who have loyalty cards that enable tracking of their purchases. Uh, and the solution that uh, they used for several years was the Teradata on appliance uh, located on premises. But uh, as, the as the businesses grow, as the data sets keep growing, and they faced the limits of scalability of the solution, so they figured out to scale this further would be very expensive. And so they initiated the project to replace it. And the question was, what should we use to replace the existing solution? Uh, so the... Uh, of course, they didn't want to sacrifice the performance, but the uh, scalability of the new solution and the uh, financial side of it were also very important for them. Uh, so what we had to offer, what we could offer, uh, it, this appliance we offered to this customer was based on Vesnin Gen 1 system and a software from an ISV partner. It's essentially a derivative of the open source Greenplum database, which is a massively parallel version of PostgreSQL. Uh, it has a really decent functionality. It uh, can store large volumes of structured and unstructured data. It works for transaction processing and anal analytics, and uh, supports columnar, uh, columnar tables, um, it even has a nice feature called polymorphic tables where you basically split uh, something, uh, split uh, a table and part of it is columnar, part of it is row based, uh, but it's a single object for a user. Uh, it uses classical sharding approach uh, that um, each table is essentially n tables where n is a cluster size, and uh, it has only, hard, only share of the rows, and each segment keeps only this share of the rows. So it's a very flexible design, and uh, it's a very reliable design. Uh, and the cluster, uh, it's classical cluster architecture. They have masters, and they have segment nodes interconnected by multiple fast networks. And uh, well, this, uh, the segment nodes, uh, they run the segments of the database, which are instances. And those instances can be fine-tuned, they can be assigned to specific network interfaces uh, for tuning of performance. And uh, they support mirroring, so if, a if something fails, a mirror is automatically launched, and the replication of data to this mirror is based on the write-ahead log. So it's a, it's a very decent store, uh, database, and um, it's a good thing to build a an appliance with. So uh, what features uh, our Vestian platform enabled for this appliance? Uh, first of all, uh, it took quite many segment instances to utilize all the hardware resources that we packed. And uh, 
on the one hand, it caused a little longer start times to bring up all those instances. The number, was, the number of instances was varied uh, from 80 to 160 in one server. But overall, it's a minor inconvenience. You start them only once, and then uh, this consolidation is really what makes this appliance attractive for customers. I will elaborate on that later. Second part is that uh, the memory utilization. Uh, those segments could utilize only a share of uh, the eight terabytes that we could offer as a maximum. So uh, considering the price and performance, we decided to configure the segment nodes with two terabytes of memory. Uh, and this volume, sh the large memory showed benefits for some join operations. And the third part is that the performance, uh, the, perform the, the high performance on open power platform. Uh, it's per physical core, it's uh, from 1.5 to two times better than uh, the, for the x86 machines that typically I used for their software solution. For CPU intensive tests, performance per, ser per server is two to three times better. And uh, the third part is that the storage subsystem performance is four and a half to six times better. It's because the Vesnin has a very fast NVMe based storage. And this is a key point that defined uh, the uh, success of this appliance, uh, the attractiveness of it. Uh, so, the c customer uh, tested two configurations. Uh, the initial functional tests and benchmarking was first performed on a smaller cluster with one master node and two segment nodes. Uh, both of the nodes, both of type of nodes were based on Vestin systems. And then they tested the scalability. Uh, what happens if you increase the number of segment nodes uh, twofold, from two, no two segments to four segments? And the test showed that the scalability is practically linear. That's an important part here because uh, it will be important to consider when we view the results the, and analyze them. Uh, as, for the, as for the POC details, the Test plans and methodology was written by the customer. The data set was also provided by the customer, and it, the entire project happened in the customer data center. So the test plans were executed sequentially, and uh, they contained from 80 to 16K queries in each test plan. The mirroring was enabled to ensure that if any node fails, uh, it would not cause a data loss or denial of service. Uh, the number of parallel sessions was varying from 1 to 16, depending on the queries, and the shift from this, of this parameter was performed on the fly. All tables were ma made columnar, and no compression was used. Uh, it's because uh, the performance boost from compression largely depends on uh, the hardware you're using. So Vestin have very high performance NVMe storage and it makes no sense to burn CPU resources on compression in that case. But for typical x86 machines that are used for this software, they turn the compression on. Uh, the tests were run without any hints of specific instructions to the optimization engine. And uh, the most constraining factor was not the memory, but it, it was the CPU resources. As you can see in the, on the graph, oh, as, you, as you could see on the graph, uh, the this database uh, was able to utilize the CPU resources quite efficiently. 10% were reserved for the operating system. And here's the most interesting part. Uh, who else participated and what were the results? So uh, the initial system was taken as a reference, the Teradata appliance. Um, here's the list. You see the list of who else was there. And uh, you can see that the amount of resources in each solution that was tested and the footprint 
varies significantly. And so does the price of hardware support and uh, the overall TCO. So we have to account for that uh, to evaluate this course properly. And having obtained these results, the customer decided that uh, the Vesnan system, the Vesnan based appliance, and the Oracle based appliance have passed the test. But meanwhile, both Oracle and Teradata solutions are half racks. And uh, our appliance, the configuration we offered to, for these tests were only four nodes. And uh, if considering the linear scalability, if we scale to half a rack, uh, we would actually outperform. And the most important part for the customer was the ETL, because it's the dominant in their practical case. So it's uh, this smaller configuration of uh, open power based appliance is outperforming Oracle on this ETL. But if we scale it to the same size, to the same footprint, it would outperform the Teradata 2. Uh, the key to what, what's the key to success? What's the key to this performance? It's uh, the plenty of PCI Express lanes available in the Open Power platform. It enabled us to pack. Uh, well, and second part is the uh, capability to handle a lot of I/O. It enabled us to pack a lot of NVMe drives in, within the compact two-unit enclosure, and. That essentially uh, made this case possible, this high density of NVMe. Of course, uh, the financial si side is also a very important dimension for this project, and Oracle licenses cost a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, uh, everyone knows that. And uh, having our appliance in Oracle in this short list, this POC concluded with very positive outcome for the open power platform that's being used for this data preparation and analytics, analytics task. So, well, I told you I would be brief, so any questions? I'll start by asking the one that Anton always asks. I'm gonna steal his question. Anything in here that could have gone better? Any problems that you had in this space, I mean, this is a great story. I love the, I love the rationale and the analysis. But anything that could have gone better, anything that could be better in the platform? Uh, what, like I said, the NVMEs are key to this uh, results. So if we could uh, get cheaper NVMEs, we could pack even more because the system was not configured to its full capacity. We could pack 24 NVMe drives and we used only 16 to match the price expectations of the customer mm -hmm. to offer a decent price. So uh, if we secure a good price for the components, we could offer even better. Okay. Anton, will you get on that? Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Come on. Would it scale as well with more uh, NVMe drives? Um, do, do you think that it uh, would scale as well uh, with more drives? Or do you think that some architectural limits might uh, come between us? Uh, I expect that it would uh, scale fine for the capacity of our enclosure from 16 to 24. It would be OK. Uh, having more, hard to tell, because nobody really tested it. We actually even quite pioneered uh, <laughs> having 24 in one chassis. We had to, initially when we designed the product, we had to solve certain issues with the NVMe stack in Linux, because it was not initially designed to have that many in one single host. Interesting. Oh, here we go. Uh, so you mentioned you're not using uh, columnar compression because you're getting s so much bandwidth out of the NVMEs. Uh, if, um, if, if say you had a, um, you, you know, an, a, a PCI Gen 4 uh, by 16 um, a adapter with an FPGA on it that 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 could do the the decompression for you, then 
you know, maybe you could get the performance of, say, eight NVMEs with four. Does that, I mean, I know that the adapters currently, the FPGA adapters are maybe a little too expensive, but that to me seems to be more of a price volume thing. Uh, could be could be possible, but I have to point that uh, those Western machines they are P8. So if we with the next generation right, with yeah. a PCIe Gen 4, yeah. we would have even better performance for the storage subsystem. But we did yeah we didn't use the compression because the uh, limiting the constraint was the CPU resources. Right, there no, was no, no, no need right. to I, to right. make it worse. Yeah. No, I. I, I yeah. Understand and agree but yeah, for with P8, faster, but, but looking even forward. faster storage subsystem would result yeah. in probably yeah, it, better. It, it, it was forms. kind of t triggered by your comment about uh, N NVMe uh, price, right? Because okay. you know, yeah. other questions. If not, then I think we say thank you very much. Outstanding. Uh, thank you.